Okay, I know it's been a while, but today I'm gonna to try to cover some more of that four plus three overdrive video. I'm gonna cover the hydraulic, mechanical, and electronic aspects of that transmission. I'm gonna show you the basics of how it works mechanically, then dive into the hydraulics, and dive into the electronics. So let's get to it. So what I've got here is the basic mechanical aspects of this overdrive system. This is actually the output shaft of the four speed that plugs into the overdrive. So I want to show you how all of this stuff actually works together and the function of it so you get a better understanding of how the transmission actually works. But first, a lot of people have been asking me about my toolbox. I just don't get that. There's so many people out there talking about what's in your toolbox and they need to show you, you know, like what's in your toolbox if it's like if it's something special or something and I really don't have any allegiance to any tool company so I kind of have just a, a mixed match of a bunch of oddball tools and anything that I use to get my job done let me show you what's in my box real quick okay because people have been bugging me about this I want to just get it squared away and get it straightened out okay I basically just have two Craftsman toolbox sets one's got a little bit higher set than the other no big deal this box pretty much has the main tools I use for the shop, and you can see everything is totally unorganized. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I've got a mix of all sorts of weird pliers here, all sorts of box wrenches. And this side here has got more weird stuff, you know, stuff for my compressor, you know, some, uh, I don't even know what's in here. Back over here, I've got some cables and uh, an old remote for a car. Some sockets, a stapler. This one here has got electrical conduit. This is kind of the stuff I use for the house in case I need some, you know, stuff for my cable TV. Over here, oh, here's my lunch. I got my lunch over here. I'll take this right now. Put that over here. That's really about it. Not too bad, but sorry to disappoint. Let's get to building, okay? Nothing interesting in there. All right, so first I want to talk about overdrive mode. <clears throat> and the way overdrive mode works is that you have the output shaft of the transmission coming into the sun gear. And if you notice this dual stage planetary, think of it as four separate counter gears. And that adds the strain to this baby. So this direct drum is held to the case by these clutches. So when in overdrive mode, hydraulics apply these clutches and lock this drum to the case. And what will happen is you'll simply have overdrive. So as everything is locked again to the case and held stationary, power goes through these gears and as you could see, it steps them up. And the ratio is simply determined by the ratio of the sun gear to this gear and the output shaft to this gear. And that's and usually these are around a 0.63 overdrive, most of them. There's two different variations, and I'll show you how to calculate that later. So I have one clutch plate on here, and you can see the clutch plate is splined to the drum, and the steel that it will apply against will be splined to the case. So when these clutches apply and they're held stationary through hydraulics, this thing is going to be locked to the case, and that's what's going to give you overdrive. So that's how overdrive operation works. Now what's unique about this transmission is how the transition occurs from direct to overdrive mode. So the back end of this drum has two purposes. It's a sprag race, and it's also a place for the clutches to hold. But without the clutches in place, what typically happens is if you burn these clutches up, you'll lose reverse and you'll lose your engine braking. So you can see, by this method, if I turn this thing in this direction, the sprag is locking and keeping this whole thing solid. But if I reverse power flow, say engine braking, where I let off the gas and let the car coast, you can see that I lose my engine braking because there's no clutches. So that's what these clutches do that are in here. Simply put, these clutches go into this system like this. I'm going to pile them all in real quick, not in any specific order. I'm going to just show you what I mean here. So this particular steel is a hardened steel that's actually a Torrington bearing race. And so in direct mode, or if you want to call it reverse or engine braking mode, 
That pressure plate with all the springs is what keeps this thing clamped together. And that's how this baby works. So when we put this together like this, you're gonna have, let's say, this bearing on here, right? That's how that kind of works. So let me show you how this works. Uh, I took the case out of the equation so you could see how everything kind of works without the case in place. You'll get a better idea, I think. So you got this pressure plate with the springs, putting out approximately a 1,300 pound load on the direct clutch pack. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this thrust washer down here, this bearing, and your direct clutch pack, very important, has steels and frictions on it, and a special steel for the roller bearing to ride against. It's a hardened steel. So keep in mind that this set of clutches is compressed under the load of this pressure plate against that drum that holds the main shaft in place, keeping everything locked direct between these clutches and the sprag. Surrounding these clutches is the overdrive clutch pack. Now, this is kind of laying in the case somewhat about here, okay? There's a, a space between, this doesn't lay on the piston, there's a, there's a ledge on the case for it to lay. And there's roughly a small clearance of about a hundred thousandths in between the two pieces. So one stack is about a hundred thousandths larger than the other, okay? So it's sitting roughly like this. Now, what we do is we take this finger piston and we lay it in place. Let me just line these up better like this and as you can see let me just line these up so it looks nice and cool again these are up here like this all right and then you have your overdrive piston so what happens as you apply overdrive this overdrive piston goes against the finger piston which pushes these springs down on this pressure plate, clamping the overdrive clutches to the case and also clamping the carrier to the case. In other words, the planetary carrier to the case. And as this piston comes down through these fingers, which are outside of these clutches, it will release the tension on the direct clutch pack and give you overdrive. So this piston, when it comes down, what will happen is you'll end up in a situation like this now where the clutch pack is engaged and compressed and the direct clutch pack is released. And again, they're sitting about like this in the case, something about like this, about 100 thousandths difference. And that's how it works. Okay, one thing I wanted to show you is the front cover of the overdrive as well. And if you notice that the seal is pressed flush with the back side, not the front side. The front side, it's recessed, okay? Very important when you rebuild this transmission. The other thing is, is that this piston kind of comes down around this and seals, okay? So what I wanted to show you is the tightness of this system. When you put this carrier in here, like this, you can see that there's really not that much room between everything. Everything is very tight together, okay? So when this carrier bearing does fail, what tends to happen is everything walks forward. This is the most common problem of failure is this bearing. And usually the bearing failure was because the unit was set up too tight crushing this bearing. So what will happen, the bearing will fail, it will disintegrate and start digging into this carrier, which in turn digs into this section over here. And because this piston is caught in between them, this whole area ends up getting mushroomed and spread out. So when you try to get the transmission apart, you can't because there's a snap ring holding this piston in place to the case. This is welded and spread out, and a lot of times you actually have to break it apart. So when you start hearing a rumbling noise in direct mode, that's because this bearing is falling apart. It's disintegrating. And, of course, the carrier is held stationary in overdrive, so the bearing noise will go away. So if you hear a rumble in your overdrive, that's because this is spinning in direct mode. And then in overdrive, again, it's clamped to the case, and the noise goes away. If that happens, you better get that bearing changed before you have a meltdown and you ruin the front cover and you ruin this piston. These component parts, if you can still get them, are very expensive. Little bit of a tip. So what I want to show you is a few things. This area in the case is where the large support steel for the overdrive clutch pack rests against. I call it a land. 
And these areas in the case, these big slots, are where the finger piston goes in to engage that pressure plate that's behind here with the springs to release the pressure plate as the overdrive clutches are compressed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay everything in here. I'm gonna make clearance for that piston. And those slots there. Quickly do all this stuff. Almost there. Line up the clutches a little bit better. So here you have your clutch pack. Now we're gonna put in this finger piston. And what I'm gonna show you on the finger piston is that you have three support tabs, 120 degrees apart. It's very important that when you assemble this transmission that these support tabs are situated so they don't hang into this hole where the piston can hang up. A lot of people used to make that mistake. So you just wanna direct that piston away from that area that those tangs can hang up in that case. So I'm just gonna put this piston in here, okay? And it'll slide back and forth nice and easy. Now, just, I'm gonna take this direct drum and put it in here, like this. So you can see that I can spin this drum freely, and that when I compress the clutches against the case, the drum is held stationary. See? That's how the overdrive mode works. So now we want to take apart the output shaft assembly and pump. And the first thing you want to do is remove the speedometer drive gear and the retaining clip for it. And you can simply take your fingers and press down on the tang of the clip and start prying against the gear gently. You don't want to ruin the gear at all. It's a plastic gear. But once you disconnect the clip from the gear, you can actually just walk the gear off the shaft. It'll come off pretty easily. Very simple. Just kind of walking it up gradually, not putting too much pressure on it, okay? Here we go. That's what your clip looks like. That's the gear. Now you have four Allen head cap screws. These cap screws are 5 30 seconds. I've already, I think, shocked these loose, but it's pretty simple. A lot of people ruin these pumps because they try to drive this thing out and I'll show that there's a, there's a drive pin for the main pump. And you can actually damage your pump if you try to add all bang on this. So you don't want to do that. And care should be given removing any of these types of bolts because they're very fine thread pitch on these and you don't want to be stripping anything out here. Again, these parts are very expensive. So once you have the four 530 seconds cap screws removed, you can take the pump body apart. So you can take the back half off and using a magnet, This is, by the way, it's called a gear rotor pump. So there's two rotors. There's an internal drive rotor and an external driven rotor. Uh, some people call this the rotor. Some people call this the idler. But they're very efficient pumps. And so what I use is a magnet to take the drive rotor out. And that exposes the drive pin that drives that rotor. And I take the magnet and fish out. You can fish out the idler rotor or the outside rotor keeping see if you can see these kind of wear marks on it and you want to make sure that it stays in the same position once those are out of the way i could take out the drive pin with the magnet right there i could take the back half of the pump off now there's going to be a thrust washer back here 
bearing and another thrust washer. And maybe you want to use your magnet again to take that off. And we're going to have the hub, the main shaft. Now you're going to have the sprag. And what I want you to notice is that the sprag is directional. There's a lip on the back side of the sprag. That's very important. You don't want to put the sprag in backwards. So if you notice that the sprag has a thicker edge, okay, that faces towards the back of the unit during reassembly. So thick edge faces towards the back for the sprag. Now here we got this is a Sprag race. This is in pretty good shape. It's not at all scored or gouged. Just clean it up with some 400 sandpaper and it's good to go. Usually I don't take these off. This press is off. You put press clamps behind it and you press it off in the event you need to change the Sprag race. But it's pretty good and I'm going to leave it the way it is. So that's our pump now completely disassembled. Not too hard. Just don't lose anything. So by understanding on how the system works, You'll get, a, you'll get a better feel for diagnosing issues and why the system is working in the certain conditions or not. For example, like if you put in that finger piston wrong, it could be hanging up in two modes and smoke the unit. So that's very important. So I'll go through all these details again when I assemble the transmission for you, but I just wanted to give you a little tip on the mechanics of it, how it works, and in the next part we're going to cover the electronics of the unit. Thanks for watching.